Thank you very much, Simona, for the nice introduction. It is my great pleasure to present to you today the joint SOS Mint expedited recommendation on intravenous thrombolysis before mechanical thrombectomy. These are my disclosures. Our module working group was chaired by Jens Filler and myself and was composed of 18 members, of whom six are neurointerventionalists. The key question here is, do we still need intravenous thrombolysis before mechanical thrombectomy in patients with large vessel occlusion? The main arguments in favor of direct thrombectomy are that intravenous thrombolysis is associated with low rates of successful reperfusion before thrombectomy. It can be associated with an increased risk of intracranial hemorrhage and thrombus fragmentation. It may delay thrombectomy and it is also associated with substantial costs. Conversely, there are arguments in favor of bridging therapy. Indeed, a minority of LVO patients recanalize early with IVT. IVT may improve the rate of successful reperfusion after thrombectomy. Fewer recanalization attempts might be needed with IVT. It may reduce microvascular thrombosis, and it may be beneficial even in those patients with unsuccessful thrombectomy. As you are aware, several randomized trials have recently tried to address some of these questions. You are now familiar with our methodology of developing guidelines. We follow the SO standard operating procedure, which is based on the GRADE approach. We identified two PICO questions. The first one was dedicated to the mothership paradigm which corresponds to patients directly admitted to a center with thrombectomy facilities. The second PICO question was dedicated to the drip and ship paradigm, which corresponds to patients admitted to a center in which intravenous thrombolysis can be delivered, but not mechanical thrombectomy. We defined and rated the importance of outcomes of interest and performed a systematic review and meta-analysis before writing our recommendations. Expert consensus statements were provided whenever we felt that the available evidence was insufficient to provide evidence-based recommendations. Here is the first PICO question dedicated to mothership patients within 4.5 hours of symptom onset. It reads as follows. For large vessel occlusion acute ischemic stroke patients, directly admitted to a thrombectomy capable center and eligible for both treatments, does mechanical thrombectomy alone compared with intravenous thrombolysis plus mechanical thrombectomy lead to a non-inferior proportion of patients with good outcome, which was our primary endpoint, and it was defined as MRS 0 to 2 at 90 days. This corresponds to functional independence. Does um, direct MT lead to a non-inferior or better results on other efficacy outcomes, notably reduced disability over the whole range of the MRS and successful reperfusion. Does it lead to a reduction in the risk of adverse events such as mortality and intracranial hemorrhage? Now let's have a look at the most important methodological point the definition of non-inferiority. Our primary endpoint was the pooled unadjusted difference in the proportions of MRS 0 to 2. Unlike others, we a priori decided to use random effects for our meta-analysis rather than a fixed effect model because of the relative heterogeneity and the design of the major trials. In order to predefine our non-inferiority margin, we conducted a secret ballot voting. Values proposed by module working group members for the non-inferiority margin range from 1% to a maximum of 5%. A majority of module working group members voted for a margin of minus 1.3%, which is based on a survey of US stroke neurologists. So you might not be very familiar with this kind of methodology. So what really matters 
and what you should have a look at is the lower boundary of the confidence interval. Here you see the non, in the non inferiority margin. Let's take the example of a study. And if you have a look at the lower confidence in, um, boundary of the confidence interval, then you see that this does not cross the line for the non inferiority margin. And therefore, that study would demonstrate non inferiority. That other study, uh, however, would not demonstrate no, non inferiority because, uh, as you can see, the lower boundary crosses uh, the non-inferiority vertical line. Our systematic review identified six randomized control trials comparing direct thrombectomy and bridging therapy in mothership patients within 4.5 hours of symptom onset. Four of them have been published, namely direct MT, DEVT, SKIP, and Mesoclino IV. The results of the two remaining studies, SWIFT Direct and Direct Safe, have been, have been presented at international conferences. Two studies conducted in China met their predefined criteria for non inferiority. Those were Direct MT and DEVT. Conversely, the four remaining studies did not demonstrate non inferiority. It is also very important to keep in mind that all of the non-inferiority margins used in the trials were quite generous. Several trials use MRS022 as primary endpoint with an uh, absolute non-inferiority margin of 10 or 12%. Other studies used the whole range of the MRS as primary endpoint with a relative non-inferiority margin. In direct MT and Mr. Clino IV, the lower boundary of the confidence interval for the common odds ratio for reduced disability had to be at least equal to 0.80 to claim non-inferiority. We judged the overall risk of bias to be low for all but three randomized trials. In direct MT and DEVT, uh, the median door to IVT time was very long approximately one hour. A selection bias is also possible because the Chinese healthcare system requires initial self-pay for Altiplex. Crossover between treatment arms uh, was also observed in direct MT. Finally, in SKIP, more than 20% of patients in the bridging therapy arm had arterial puncture before IVT was started. These are the results of the meta-analysis for our primary outcome, MRS022, which corresponds to functional independence at three months. As expected, no study demonstrated the superiority of either treatment. Across trials, the risk difference ranged from minus 8.5% in SWIFT Direct, which therefore tended to favor bridging therapy, to 7.5 to from 7 sorry 7.7 percent in DEVT, which tended to favor MT alone. Now let's have a closer look at the pooled results. The unadjusted risk difference was minus 1.9 percent, with a confidence interval of minus 5.9 to 2.1 percent. Non inferiority non inferiority was also and not met based on the minimal clinically acceptable margin of 5% proposed by uh, Modi Working Group members. Therefore, according to our own predefined criteria, uh, we cannot conclude that direct MT is non-inferior to bridging therapy. When considering reduced disability, the adjusted common odds ratio was 0.92 with a confidence interval of 0.80 to 1.07. These are the results for all cause mortality at 90 days. Uh, this was similar in the two treatment groups with an unadjusted odds ratio of 1.06. Here we have the results for successful reperfusion, which was defined as MT key uh, 2B or better which corresponds to a reperfusion of at least half of the target arterial territory at the end of the endovascular procedure. 
you can see here that bridging therapy was statistically superior to direct MT with an unadjusted odds ratio of 0.72. Regarding symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage, there was a trend for a lower uh, risk of uh, ICH with direct MT, but this did, not, uh, this did not reach statistical significance. However, when considering any intracranial hemorrhage, direct MT was significantly superior to bridging therapy with an unadjusted odds ratio of 0.80. This is our evidence-based recommendation for the 0 to 4.5 hours time window. For patients directly admitted to a thrombectomy-capable center for an acute ischemic stroke with anterior circulation large vessel occlusion and who are eligible for both treatments, we recommend intravenous thrombolysis plus mechanical thrombectomy. We judge the quality of evidence to be moderate and we provide a strong recommendation. Both treatments should be performed as early as possible after hospital arrival. Mechanical thrombectomy should not prevent the initiation of intravenous thrombolysis, and intravenous thrombolysis should not delay mechanical thrombectomy. We found insufficient evidence to provide an evidence-based recommendation for patients with wake-up stroke. Therefore, we provide the following expert consensus statement. For patients directly admitted to a thrombectomy-capable center within 4.5 hours of symptom recognition after wake-up stroke caused by anterior circulation large vessel occlusion, we suggest intravenous thrombolysis plus mechanical thrombectomy. The selection criteria, but this only applies to selected patients. The selected criteria are detailed in the corresponding European guidelines, namely the 2019 SOS Mint guidelines on mechanical thrombectomy and the 2021 ISO guideline on intravenous thrombolysis. Notably, eligibility matching criteria for IVT include either DWI flare mismatch or perfusion core penumbra mismatch, according to the extent trial criteria, which are listed here. Now let's focus on the second PICO question, which is dedicated to drip and chip. Other than that, it is identical to the previous one. Unfortunately, the literature on this topic was scarce and we had to rely on a systematic review of observational studies. In the interest of time, I will directly present our evidence-based recommendation. For patients admitted to a non-thrombectomy capable center for an acute ischemic stroke with anterior circulation, large vessel occlusion, and who are eligible for post treatments, we recommend intravenous thrombolysis followed by rapid transfer to a center with thrombectomy facilities. We judge the quality of evidence to be low, but this is a strong recommendation as well. Importantly, intravenous thrombolysis should not delay the transfer to a center with thrombectomy facilities. Here is the expert consensus statement for wake-up stroke patients according to the drip and ship paradigm. This recommendation is identical to the one for mothership patients. We suggest intravenous thrombolysis plus mechanical thrombectomy in patients as selected with advanced imaging. Now let's discuss our recommendations. We are aware that another guideline group might actually come up to an opposite conclusion based on the same data. Indeed, everything relies on the choice of the non-inferiority margin. Some might consider that 1.3% is too stringent. However, non-inferiority was also not met based on the maximum acceptable margin of 5% proposed by Modi Working Group members. Only accepting a margin of 5.9% uh, would lead to the conclusion of non-inferiority. Non and therefore, the question here is, is this really acceptable? This would correspond to 59 fewer independent outcomes among 1,000 patients treated with direct thrombectomy. And the corresponding number needed to harm would be 17. 
One must also keep in mind the effect size of previous guideline changing trials. In Mr. Clean, this uh, unadjusted risk difference for MRS022 was approximately 13%. In the NINS TPA trial, 12%. In X10, 6.7%. And in AKS3, it was 5%. Let's conclude. It needs to be borne in mind that randomized trials only included patients with anterior circulation, large vessel occlusion strokes, eligible for alteplase within 4.5 hours of symptom onset, and admitted to a thrombectomy capable center. In that setting, non inferiority of direct MT has not been demonstrated according to our pre specified non inferiority margin. Therefore, in the absence of contraindication, we recommend IVT before MT, even under the mothership scenario, which is less favorable to IVT than the drip and ship scenario. However, IVT should not delay MT or the transfer to a center with MT facilities. We also suggest IVT before thrombectomy in selected patients with wake-up stroke. These recommendations may be updated in case individual patient data meta-analysis disclose subgroups of mothership patients in whom direct MT is superior to IVT plus MT. This could lead to more personalized treatment strategies, which will be the topic of the next talk. Thank you very much for your attention.